A few months back, I did a teardown of a 60 watts Philips dimmable LED bulb and questioned the reliability of this particular model, as all six of these bulbs I installed had failed in just over a year of normal use. Well, the problem does not seem to be just limited to Philips LED bulbs, as recently a few of the LED bulbs in my living room started to fail as well, and these LED bulbs were installed at roughly the same time as those failed Philips bulbs, but this time these are Cree LED bulbs. Keep in mind that both Philips and Cree are big players in LED lighting markets, and these two along with Osram, General Electric, and LG make, the, uh, make up the majority of the name brand LED light bulbs here sold in North America. So given the experience I have, it does not seem that the long-term reliability of these LED lighting solutions had been adequately addressed yet. So just for a comparison, I have a few compact fluorescent bulbs here in my lab that I haven't replaced yet, and they have been working for almost 10 years now, and still shows no sign of failing. And a few that did fail over the years could be attributed to the dried up or bulged electrolytic filter capacitors used in the driver circuitry. So let's uh, open up one of these uh, Cree LED light bulbs and uh, see what's inside. By the way, this is rated for 65 watts at uh, a power dissipation of 9 watts, whereas this is uh, 60 watts at power dissipation of 7 watts. So it appears that the, uh, the Philips ones are slightly, ever so slightly, more efficient than the Cree ones. But uh, nevertheless, they're quite comparable. And the bulb itself is made of glass, just like that of uh, the Philips bulb. Although recently I have started seeing more and more of these kind of LED light bulbs started using the uh, plastic enclosures instead of glass ones, because it's not necessary to pull vacuum inside, and it's uh, a lot safer for plastic because it doesn't shatter. So let's uh, open up this Cree LED and uh, see what is inside. And I have opened up one earlier, and by smashing the glass bulb, and here's what you can see inside. Basically, we have two high-power LEDs, and these are chip LEDs, and each presumably is rated at 4.5 watts, which is quite uh, high wattage, uh, given what I have seen from different LED light bulbs. Usually the ones are made of uh, several smaller 1 watts LEDs and arranged in a circle or different shapes and uh, to produce the rated uh, uh, 7 to 9 watts for a 60 watts, 65 watts light bulb. But these ones are only using two. So uh, that's what you see from by uh, just removing the uh, glass top. And this portion of the LED bulb is quite heavy. So there is clearly a very large uh, aluminum enclosure for a uh, served as a heat sink. So I went ahead and uh, further disassembled this uh, LED bulb. And actually it's not as easy as uh, the other Philips I did earlier in a previous video, because these ones are actually potted inside. So it took me quite a bit of uh, uh, work, as you can see here, so I had to saw this part open and uh, remove all the potting material, so the, it's actually quite a mess. Um, but anyway, so at the end, end, I actually removed the circuit board and uh, LED. So the LED here, first I'll show you, is uh, I had to Dremel it out because the whole thing is a, the casing seems to be a integrated uh, uh, single piece aluminum. And, uh, and these uh, circuit boards simply were pre-made and uh, glued on top. So as you can see from the, uh, the actual board material itself, it's a very thin material. So one thing quite neat is that uh, the, uh, the contacts made to the circuit board, instead of soldering being soldered on, they are actually press fitted. So as you can see here, these two are the, uh, uh, the power input into the LED board and these were actually press fitted onto the circuit board. So the circuit board I removed, you can see here, has two contact points here. 
and basically the LED uh, sits on top of these uh, contact points. So that's uh, actually quite neat and that does increase the reliability as uh, since there's no soldered ones here they cannot be subjected to uh, the heat and uh, cool down cycle when you are operating the LEDs so it will be more reliable as uh, that failure mode uh, is totally eliminated from the picture. And here's a circuit board from this Cree uh, LED light bulb and I will post some of the higher resolution pictures on my website. But just from a glance you can see that uh, this one actually uses a lot of quality components. This very heavy duty inductor here and this two contacts uh, for the press fit contacts to the actual main LED chip. And um, from the glance you can see we have a dedicated LED driver chip here and I will grab the part number shortly and we can take a look at that. And here is an external MOSFET to drive the actual LED. So on the back here we can see that this board is uh, designed by Cree and uh, is a 2015 model. And there is still some of this uh, uh, potting material which is uh, very hard to work with when you uh, try to Dremel it. The dust started flying all over the place but uh, uh, the best way to get rid of this is just use a knife to cut off the layers, uh, cut it off layer by layer. But uh, anyway, so let's take a look at uh, the chip itself. And the chip, it is marked as uh, SSL5231 Main Stimmable Buck LED Driver IC. So it's a dedicated LED driver and it's uh, known for its high efficiency up to 91% and also very high power factor. So this is clearly different than what we saw in our previous Philips LED teardown. Because for that one, if you remember, and here is the circuit board, for that one everything is uh, discrete components. And we measured a very poor power factor of just around 60%. And the data sheet also gives a reference design for the circuit. And here we can see. Also, before I forget, I wanted to point out that this uh, circuit board, if you look at here, we actually have a dedicated uh, fuse here instead of just a resistor, a resistor fuse. And this is actually a dedicated fuse. So arguably, the construction quality of this driver is uh, uh, much higher than the Philips ones. And uh, also, the whole circuit board is potted. So basically, any environmental uh, moisture and uh, stuff like that cannot uh, get into the circuit and cause it to fail. But um, disappointingly, uh, the chip itself, the LED chip itself is still susceptible to heat. And uh, clearly, the failure mode of this uh, Cree LED is the same as uh, that of uh, many different LEDs. Basically, they started to flicker because uh, the LED chip is overheated. So now let's take a look at if we can drive this LED using our lab power supply and uh, to see what is the uh, voltage that it's taking. For that I'm going to use my bench uh, constant current power supply and set it to slightly less than what is rated current. And uh, we will take a look at what is the voltage drop across these uh, anode and cathode. So now I turn on my HP 6181 C DC current uh, source and I set the current to roughly around 30 milliamps and here right now is to see the, uh, the voltage output without any load. So now let's uh, try to power this up and uh, see what the actual voltage we get because that would be the operating voltage of these LED lamps. And uh, here we go. So it's right around uh, 70 volts the voltage and it dropped a little bit. And right now we're operating, keep in mind, this is lower than the actual current draw during normal operation. Right now we're only supplying around 30 milliamps. And let's uh, give it another good reading. So right now it's around uh, 70 volts. And uh, from the construction, um, 
because uh, you can't really see here, but uh, these two are actually in series. So the voltage drop across uh, each of the single LED is about uh, 35 volts. And if you'd like to take a look that I did put a dot here earlier, so this is an indication that this is the, uh, the cathode. Uh, because sometimes if you're not paying attention, the, you, you hook the power backwards, you could easily kill your LED. But interestingly, these LEDs uh, have a uh, reverse uh, diode on them, so as I will show you here, so to prevent you from accidentally powering them backwards. So right now, if I do the forward, because we cannot measure the voltage drop because it's a more than 30 volts. However, if we do the reverse, you will see that uh, there is a body diode. There are two of them because these two are in series. So, which is a very good. Uh, this definitely would help preventing you from connecting them accidentally backwards. Although these LEDs have failed due to overheating and uh, uh, started flickering, these LEDs themselves are perfectly fine for project use, and uh, throwing these bulbs out would be a huge waste. So what can we do with these uh, LEDs that we salvaged from the light bulb? Well, here is what uh, I came up with. And uh, if you recall, these are the LED bulbs that I took from the, uh, the Philips and uh, these have integrated heatsink, but uh, after I took it out of the light bulb, they are not sufficient to cool them down. So I mounted that on a uh, piece of uh, metal that I had. I don't remember where I had this uh, from, but uh, it's perfect size for mounting three of these. And uh, at the back, I added two fans to blow cool air onto the, uh, the light. So the three of these, if you recall, we the operating voltage for these uh, LEDs are around 30 volts, 32 volts. So I happen to have a power supply that uh, is from a, I think, an ink, inkjet printer that outputs 32 volts at 700 milliamps and also has another output of uh, 16 volts, uh, 600 milliamps. So the 16 volts output, I put these two fans in series so that uh, to power the fan and uh, the 32 volts I'm using that to power these LEDs. Each LED I added a little balancing resistor here and you can see from here so that uh, uh, to ensure that the current is uh, properly shared among these LEDs. So now this actually turns out to be a very good power source, sorry, very good uh, light source. And I'm thinking of uh, using that as my lab light in the future. So I will give a quick demonstration here. I'm going to point this away from the camera so that uh, you don't get blinded. But uh, I can turn it on right now. And this is very, very bright. And also it is very quiet. And because of the these two fans are operating at a much lower speed than the normal rated uh, 12 volts. They're uh, only operating at around uh, uh, 8 volts right now. So I thought this is a very nice uh, lab light replacement. And I actually had been using this for a while and uh, they do not get very warm because of the fans and also it's in the open uh, air construction rather than fitted into this uh, enclosure that uh, the original light bulb came with. I hope you enjoyed the video and please remember to subscribe, share and like. I will catch up with you next time.